This is my video for option number two for the border for the Blue Rathal blanket. This is the one where you don't make the double border or the envelope border, we're making a single border. Now, this is not what I did on my blanket, as you are well aware, but I think I should give you this option for those of you who don't, for whatever reason, want to make the envelope border. So I'll show you. Uh, this was my envelope border still in progress when I'm doing this um, video. So I'll show you the two. That's the envelope border. And this is the moss stitch border. Now, there are some pluses and minuses for both borders. Obviously, for the envelope border, you're not needing to um, sew in any of these over a thousand ends along the two long sides of the blanket. They get trapped between the two layers. But if you really don't want to make the envelope border, then you can do this one. Now, this involves the ends being sewn in and that's something that you would need to do first of all. In fact, I would recommend that you sew these ends in. If you've decided in advance that this is the border you're going to do, sew the ends in as you go. Otherwise, you will have a mammoth task to sew them in um, at the end. And sewing in the ends uh, involves just threading the ends onto a tapestry needle and weaving them one by one down through the stitches of the blanket about uh, two, two inches or so and then coming back through and then snipping it tight close to the, to the, um, the blanket itself. And so you've got this double layer of security to stop your um, your end from unravelling. And you want to try to avoid going right through to the back so you don't see any stitches on the back. You're just threading through the layers of stitches, through the middle of the blanket, if you like. And you'd need to do that for every single uh, end all the way along. And also bear in mind that um, I don't recommend that you knot them uh, as you're working the blanket. If you've decided in advance that you're going to do the single border, don't knot the ends together. Otherwise, you're left with that um, little uh, lump where the knot is and you don't need a knot if you're sewing the ends in. So that's something you have to you have to make that decision fairly early on. Um, when you're actually making the blanket. So this is moss stitch and I chose this stitch because it is, got, it's a nice texture. So it, it sort of blends well with the texture of the blanket, but it also is a fairly firm stitch. It's a small stitch, which um, is balanced well, so it's not going to skew out of shape and I think it makes uh, a nice option for a single border. Now, what you have to do is you have to work into, I mean, obviously working along the short end is simple. You're working into the tops of the stitches. And I'm not going to start there because, uh, of course, my sample blanket has bits and pieces of borders all the way around it. So I'm working on the long end just to show you what to do. And normally when you're making a border on a blanket, I would say go ahead and do a foundation round of double crochet all the way around the blanket to give you a secure edge to work your border into. However, this time I decided that the way the stitches lie along this long end, because they're not particularly helpful, for working into. None, it never is when you're working against the, the run of the crochet, but it just seemed to me to um, work better without doing the double crochet round and just going straight in with the moss stitch round. Now moss stitch is simply one double crochet followed by one chain, one double crochet, one chain all the way along. And then your next round, you work into the space, the little space created by the 
one chain. So you double crochet into that and then chain one over the double crochet from the previous row. And that way it gives you a nice um, integrated stitch which isn't running in rows as such. So this is the moss stitch. I think I did uh, one, two, three, four, five, six rows to get this depth of border. You can make as, as, as many rows as you like. You could make it a narrower border. You could make it a wider one. You can do something different along the edge. If you want to do a finish, you could make a, a little uh, pico edge or any of the edges that you can find on um, Google. You can Google edging for crochet and there are hundreds come up, but I just left mine simple. So I'm still using my three and a half millimeter hook and I'm going to go along to the end here because there's not much of my sample piece left which hasn't got border of some sort in it. Um, that's it tidier. Now that was just a little piece where I had done a, a part of a border um, and then pulled it back before I videoed. So I have now attached my meadow yarn with my three and a half millimeter hook into the corner. This corner looks funny because, of course, it's got a bit, a bit of the envelope border sitting in it. But don't worry about that. We're just working down this edge for the um, moss stitch border. So I've attached my yarn and I'm going to chain one. And that chain one is the equivalent of the first double crochet stitch. And then I'm going to chain one again. Now, this is the only time where you chain two. That's the first chain is the double crochet stitch and the second chain is the first chain space of our pattern. And then I have dis I've discovered, just avoid that because that is still a, a loop that's showing through. Um, I discovered that if I worked into these small holes, you'll see if I can pull them apart a little bit so with my needle, you can see that the structure of the interlocking block stitch gives you a little hole all the way along in a quite an even um, manner all the way along the blanket. Now normally I wouldn't work into the holes along a side. I would always say try and get in between two stitches. But this isn't this is just a small hole which um I think could be the answer for getting even stitches with your uh, moss stitch. So I've done my chain one so I'm going to go into this hole and do one double crochet and then we're off with it. So that's chain one. Now there's another space along here which you can't really see because I have this is just a little messy bit which pulled out when I was taking out my um, sample border a minute ago so don't worry we're going to jump over that we'll come to the next space this is actually going to pull back so I don't really want you to worry about that that's my mistake right I'm going to come to my next this is us properly onto it this that bit was a, a a messy bit right double crochet chain one look for the next space there's one big one there there's actually one sitting in there as well so I'm going to go into that one chain one into the next space chain one there's a space well, I'm creating a space, if you like, between in this bit here, chain one. And in here, double crochet, chain one. In here, and this is actually very even along the edge of the blanket. Just into these little spaces. They're obligingly there for you to work your stitches in. And you can see that they are quite evenly spaced along the edge of the blanket. And that is the first row of your um, moss stitch. You would 
I've come all the way down with my double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, all the way down. It's um, fairly even, I think. And I finished, made sure that I finished with a chain one. And then going into the corner, now this corner looks a little bit different because obviously this is part of my um, double border sample. But I'm going into the corner with a double crochet, one double crochet, and then chain two and one more double crochet. And that takes you round the corner ready to start the next side. And I'm not going to do that because I'm going to come back to let you see what the second row looks like. So you would go all the way around and then you would slip stitch into this very first chain that you made right at the beginning. So you would finish your fourth corner with a double crochet, chain two and then slip stitch into that first chain one. And then you can chain one, which is for your new uh, round, and turn it over and ready to start off with the next round. So what I've done is I've chained one at this end and I'm turning it over. And this is now very easy to work into. Again, it's double crochet and chain one. Now, we've got, because we put that last chain one in, we want to last double crochet and we want to chain one find the first chain space and put a double crochet in it chain one into the next chain space and double crochet so basically what you're doing is you're working into these nice relatively easy to find spaces from the um the previous row I'll just chain one so it's double crochet and chain one and this will be easy to work around because it's not a difficult stitch to do to start with and it's not a difficult place to put your hook and it's actually quite a nice little stitch Here you can see it's starting to take shape and this is the moss stitch. Now I'll work around with that one and um, I think you might need about five rows. So I'll do a few rows of this and come back and let you see what the effect is for the for this. So this is the single border for the um, Blair Athol blanket. I'm just coming to the last few stitches of my border of moss stitch. And um, I think I've done five rows. I haven't really counted, but it gives you the idea of what the border looks like. It's a good stitch for a border because it doesn't pull out of shape. Um, it's balanced and it gives a nice little bit of texture which corresponds with the texture of the um, interlocking block stitch. Now, I'm just going to finish this off and I wanted just to point out to you, if, if you've never done this stitch before, these are the spaces. You see these little V shapes? I'll use my needle. These little V shapes are the double crochet stitch from the previous row. So you be careful that you don't put your hook in between the V because that's not the, the chain one space. It's these little spaces in between. So I'm just going to finish this off and then we'll have a little chat about the borders again. Of course, I haven't gone all the way around my blanket, as you know. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that you would have done your rounds of moss stitch round all four sides and always back where you started in the corner that you started in would be where you would um, slip stitch into the top of the first stitch of the first chain and then um, chain up and turn ready to do your next round. So that is moss stitch. Now the pluses of that are of course that it's not a double border 
but this particular stitch is the same on front and back, so that's a plus. Um, it's maybe relatively a little easier to do, although you are still working into the odd bumpy bits of the edge and you have to try to be even with your first round of stitches. Um, but there is another, uh, I would say there was a downside to it which, which makes it kind of balance out with the double border and that is of course the fact that you've had to sew in all these thousands of ends before you actually come to doing that. So although this appears to be faster because it's just a single um, side, do remember that you have had, had to spend quite a lot of time sewing in these ends. So I'm going to leave the final decision to you. So um, <clears throat> here we have the comparison. You've got the double border with your uh, yarn, all the little yarn ends trapped in there so that they can't come out, or the single border where you've sewn them in. And that is your decision, and I'll leave that to you. So I hope you have, enjoy making this blanket, and I'll see you again next time.